We're at ACC tip-off. Steve Forbes is dancing as he joins the show. Look at those dance moves. Oh, yeah, I got them. Look, here you go. In the <laughs> 70s, were you ever at discos? I wasn't old enough, Josh. Um, it, I, I had the clothes. Uh, okay, great story. I, I was so mad at my parents. They had this uh, discotheque or discotheque in Iowa City, Iowa called Granddaddy's, right? And on Sundays, they let people in under 18 that was, you know, non-drinking crowd. Because I think the drinking age at that point was either 18 or 19. And my parents would never let me go. So I missed out on this whole culture of granddaddies in Iowa City. Um, But, yeah, we did. uh, Saturday Night Fever was a big deal, bud. It was a big deal back in the day. Will, have you seen the movie Saturday Night Fever starring John Travolta? Well, no, we haven't gotten oh, that that's you. That's oh a sound that plays God. anytime he hasn't seen a movie. Well, He's watching Coming to America for the first time. Oh, what? Where, where are you from? I'm from right here in High Point, Mars. Oh but you would God. think Mars with my movie. Okay, oh. Saturday Night Fever might be one that has the best soundtrack in the history of movies. Maybe the best opening sequence. I mean, there's a, there's a show. There's like another show about how the Bee Gees wrote the darn thing. So you better come on, man. We gotta get you going. We gotta we'll figure it out. It. You do know who the Bee Gees are, right? Oh yeah, staying yeah. alive. I know the Bee Gees. There, there you go. go. That's, that's the movie. That's impressive. We got that. Let's talk family, Steve. Yep. Your son Chris got married this summer. Yep. And less than a year removed from yep. your wife's stroke. Tell the people how neat of a surprise it was for Chris. What ended up happening? Well, you know, when Janetta had a stroke on August uh, 8, two thousand and twenty-three. You know, a little year and a couple months ago, she um. We tried to set long-term goals, you know, because um, she couldn't do anything. I, everybody knows she lost everything on her left side. But so we set this goal of um, let's try to walk. She's going to try to walk down the aisle at his wedding on, on 8-24-24. So um, now look, unbeknownst to me, they went and picked a wedding venue that was in the mountains that had a amphitheater. And she had to go downstairs and upstairs, I mean, steep to get in and out wow so anyway um she did it she um christopher got married to annie on uh, august 24th and you know she walked down into the amphitheater with me and walked back out and then she danced with her son you know um at the wedding reception so she's come a long ways and and i think about a year ago today when we had this or whenever you know a year ago i don't I hardly even remember some of the things now. It was so it was happened so fast and it was so overwhelming. You know, at this point, this is probably when Christopher and Annie moved back in the house with me to help take care of her. So we're very blessed. She's come a long ways. She doesn't use her wheelchair much anymore. She uses a cane. She still can't drive. If she can ever get to where she can drive again, then you know, everything will be good. Did Chris know that she was gonna be able to do all those things? Yeah, I think so. I mean he's you know, he's around the house a lot. Okay. He, um we practiced the night before. What was the song that they danced to? Do you know? I don't remember. I was probably out at the cigar bar. No. How were you in the reception? I mean, what do you mean? Much of a dancer? No. Are, I'm you, a, are I you, mean, you a fun wedding guest? I, I told guess, you. I had, I had a cigar bar. I had, I had an outdoor deal going. I had a whole crowd of people out there. You should know that you're the only coach that my wife considered inviting to our wedding. Well, you should have done it. Thinking that you would be a great wedding a guest. wedding crasher, man. Good at it. Um, Have you ever crashed, crashed a wedding? Kind of one. That, it was a long story. It's in a book. Dane Bradshaw wrote a book, uh, Vertical Leap. Well, actually, he didn't have any vertical. But um, I got invited to his brother's wedding my first year at Tennessee. I had gone down to the Tennessee Memphis football game, kind of wandered in there. The parents didn't know who I was. Dane had just met me. And they thought I was crashed the wedding. And Dane's like, no, this is my assistant coach. So. Um, then it, I was a hit, but, uh, that was on mud Island in, in Memphis, but, um, I don't make a habit of it. Um, you no, strike I'm, me as the guy who's like a conversationalist. Yeah, at the yeah, bar. Yeah. I mean, I'm a dancing type to no, get the crowd going. No, I, did, I, I got it at the end a little bit. Um, you know, the, the neat thing about the wedding was in, we've collected obviously a lot of friends over the years and from a lot of different places. And my wife said something interesting to me. After the wedding, she said the greatest thing about the wedding was our our friends became friends with our friends. You know, like they met. I had a bunch of friends meet 
each other from different states that really liked each other. You know, so that part I thought was pre- she thought was pretty cool. I did too. Steve Forbes is with us here. While we're talking about family, one year, or part of me, one month and one week from now, I'm going to be a dad. Oh, congratulations! One month, one week from now, you'll be changed. Your life will change. So, when you're a college basketball coach, you have the relationships with players when they're in school, but you also re- keep those when they mm-hmm. leave yep. campus as well. So. All right, I'm in the coach's office now. Coach, yep. I'm having a kid. Yep. How should I be feeling? One month, one week away. Help well, me. it's the most important job you're ever going to have, Josh, is raising your child. you know. And so um, your life's going to change. You're going to give up a lot of things that you're used to doing with your independence and, and uh, to, raise that, to raise that child. And you're, gonna, and you're not going to get any sleep because that first one, at least, you're going to get up and, and – you're gonna, you know, you're gonna help your wife. Now, I'll be honest with you. Me, second and third, I wasn't as good as I was on the first. You know, um, being out recruiting late at night and this and that. No excuses, but I just wasn't. Um, again, it, it's a, it's an, it's an awesome uh, responsibility. I'll say this: they were asking me about, uh, you know, Martin Luther King, Black History Week, and I. The one thing that I will tell you is, and I think this is where it starts. You know. Children aren't born racist. They're not born with hate in their heart. They're taught it. So teach your child to love people, and uh, and then we can change the world. Steve Forbes is with us here. Remember, show some grace if I ask any, as you call them, off the wall yeah. questions or anything. Like you can you can use the card of Josh. I understand that you're short of sleep during this basketball yeah. season. Yeah, I get it. I've been there. I, you I'm gonna, I'm, I'm going to be short of sleep just because it's it's just easy. I get it. I get it. Uh, Steve, I'm on to you. Yeah. Steve Forbes is with us here. Last few years, you've been very talkative during the summer, like hyping up your program and talking yeah. about, and that's part of the job. We get it. You've been quieter this off season. You yeah. got the goatee that's yeah. filling out. Well, I had to. I mean, I had to take attention off my head. You I, know? I'm wondering. It, there's a vibe that it seems you know you're sitting on a monster right now at Wake. Uh, I got a good team. We, we have a good team. Um, now, you know, we got to go out and do it. Um, but y- y- how do you not be excited when, you know, one of the best players in the league and one of the best players in all of college basketball decides not to go in the NBA draft? You know, that's just not something that normally happens. And then you got this kid sitting down over there, Cameron Hildreth, who's going to is going to be a four year player, which is an anomaly these days. Already a thousand point scorer, and and, and our, you know one of the hardest playing players in college basketball. And you get Efton Reed back, who's a double double in the league and one of the best centers in the league. And then Parker Fredrickson puts on twenty pounds, and you know he made fifty threes as a freshman. And Marcus Marion has shown improvement. You got those guys back, and then we go and do our thing. You know, start with Juke Harris, who a top hundred player and down the road in Salisbury and, and, uh, is, is, is going to play as a freshman six, seven wing. He's how many guys are going to play for you, Steve? Oh, I think early on we'll play 10, you know, um, if we can, then we'll see. I mean, I've, you know, I'll play as many as I can if, if, if they deserve it, you know, um, four returning players, the four transfers juke. Okay. I, that's I mean, by, right now, Marcus would be the only one. It's kind of out of the mix. That's Five just returns, that's yeah. just because um, you know he's been hurt, but he's back and he's showing some 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 really good. He's had some really good moments. You know, um, you know the portal. I mean, Trey Spillers is a he's a really good player. I mean, him and Omaha Blue are battling it out at the four, and Omaha coming off an injury and surgery didn't really have a summer, um, but is back pretty pretty much close to normal. Uh, Did you tell Omaha about? Your honeymoon in Omaha? Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, Omaha's born there, but he's from well, – he grew up in Iowa, like me. This uh, sounds like a scene from Forrest Gump. Yeah. Oh, there's Tex. He's from Arkansas. Yep. Yeah. Forrest Gump. Omaha, he's from Den- Des Moines. You strike me as someone who loves um, Forrest Gump. I do. I love that. Well, they just asked me that – I mean, I have asked some really bizarre questions today, but one of them was like – Not by me. Name three celebrities you'd want to have – Thanksgiving dinner with, and I don't know what I said, but I did say 
fine. I just went with Tom Hanks. I said, yeah, I kind of like, I love that movie Forrest Gump. I'd like to know more about it. My favorite line reading from Forrest Gump is the guy giving the speech at the rally. Forrest and Gump. Forrest Gump. Yeah, there it is right there. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Got the. Yeah, Jenny. That's, that's all I got Forrest. to say about that. that. Uh, I know. Today, it's it's media day. Mm-hmm. Since we're at media day, let me ask you about the media and the job. If there's something that you could change about the way college basketball is covered, what would mm. be the first thing you point I, to? I, I miss the print media guys, um, like David Teal and, um, you know, Mike Barber. They're two guys that are no longer going to be on the beat. Um, those guys are nothing against the fan site guys, but those guys were – uh, they, to me, that's they're the backbone of of reporting college basketball, you know, and um, and so I, I do think I'd love to see more of those those guys. I think then I think they're a dying breed, you know. I, that comes to my mind, you know, more so than anything is just, uh, and that's the way I was raised. I, you know, I read the newspaper, right? There was three newspapers in my hometown. There was the Des Moines Register in the morning, Iowa City Press Citizen at night, and the Lone Tree Reporter was weekly. And that's where you got your news, and you relied on those guys to give it to you. And so I do miss that a little bit. Last thing, what did you take away from Joe and Artie at spring meetings? Oh, I, I thought it was very productive. You know, Joe Joe um, had a couple days with this to explain how, you know, he sees it as far as uh, how teams are picked in the uh, tournament, uh, the analytic part of it, uh, scheduling part of it. He didn't have anything to say about the talent in the league? No, he didn't. Um, we talked about that. I mean, you know, I don't, it wasn't personal. I, t- I told you that before. I, I, you know, I Again, he he spoke to us about what he knows, and, he you know, that's what he gets. It's his exper- expertise is the tournament and how do you, you know, who, who does he pick and how, why, and what does he look at. Those are important things. As far as the players are concerned, that's not his area. And he – we're good. Joe and I are fine. I, you know – it wasn't personal. It's just – and, look, when you're on the bubble, like we've been two of the last three years, you get a little grumpy. You know, it's it's hard. I mean, there's a lot of pressure that last month of the season. It seems like it's just life or death every game. And, um, you know, sometimes that gets to you a little bit too. Brian Kersey said he's mad at you for one reason. Uh, that's hard to say. He's mad because you didn't – he wasn't invited to the Cousin Eddie game to get some of the cousins. I mean – Do we have any promotions Kersey, that we're I looking mean, at this year? Oh, you have to ask our talented marketing crew. I don't know. Whatever they point me in the right direction, I'm going to go do it. Coming um, to America Night? Oh, we could do that. We could. Um, R.I.P. James Earl Jones. We could, a, we could have a Grinch night, I think. I used to do Star Wars night at East Tennessee State. I got plenty of those pictures. Whoa, I would have been Star all over that. I'm now, all you're showing your, now you're showing your age. My yeah, goodness. I'm all over it. All right. All right. Steve Forbes. Thanks. Thanks for making the time for us. We'll see you yep. back in Winston. Hey, WSJS Radio. Josh Graham.